Hello, Peter from Wakefield Handmade here. After I posted a video yesterday of uh, using the strong arm tool, a couple of people asked me more detail about how it works. So I thought I would take a shot from a different angle so you can get the full picture of uh, what an ingenious little tool this is. I'm throwing 12 pound pots, so starting off with six pounds here, get that centered first. So the strong arm is a, this uh, centering arm, it's, there's a metal plate here, and then a, a ball opener that's a separate arm. So starting off, just put in a little bit of pressure like that. What's really helpful for me with a sore shoulder is that I can, with my left arm, uh, just tuck my elbow into my body and um, then uh, push up, lean my body into it rather than trying to come at it from the side, which is what I would normally do. And I'm ready to add the other six pounds. And the plate on this uh, strong arm is really only large enough to uh, handle about 12 pounds of clay. Uh, they make one with a larger plate. I'd like to check into that. So. And when you've got more clay on here, it's um, uh, a slick little trick to use. Uh, I always call something like this a cheater bar. You add something to extend the, uh, the length of the lever that you're pulling on to get a little bit more leverage. techniques for doing this. Some potters use um, their flat hand on the outside or even turned like this. I've always done it with my knuckle and uh, do uh, some pulls with a kind of a sponge in front of my knuckle which helps keep it gliding. And like you saw this bat is just stuck onto a sort of a base of clay at the bottom, so you want to be careful not to pull too hard, too fast, or the whole thing will come off and it gets very frustrating. So I'm going to make like three or four passes like this with just my knuckle and a sponge. And you can see I'm going to this point in space, which is the right and diameter. You see it 
coming up closer to the height right there. And now I'm ready to do more of a, I guess you could call it a shaping pull with this um, um, metal rib. These were sometimes made of clay in the old days, uh, or wood. And the rib really helps kind of corral the clay and distribute it a little bit more evenly. And then also uh, give a little bit more stability to the shape that you're trying to make without having too many deep lines from your fingers and throwing. Also, it's um, a rib like this is great for uh, defining edges like this for where the beading is going to go. And this shape is uh, an ovoid inspired by Sokolay's ovoid crocs from New England in probably the early 1800s or late 1700s. The traditional salt glazed ones are probably a little taller profile, but a similar shape. But I thought widening out this profile was a nice combination of a shape that would work well for planting and uh, a shape that I've always thought was very pretty. So, and you can see I made a little base there, trim it up underneath a little bit, give it a touch with the sponge, smooth it out, and then I'm ready to do the decorative beading. This is a, a wooden uh, coggle that actually some friends of mine in Honduras made for me, made with Honduran hardwood, and it will leave the impression of this beading. Move it out with this little brush. And then after this is leather hard, probably by tomorrow, I will be able to put uh, lug handles on it, like the old Crocs. Anyway, just wanted to let you see how that's done. Thanks for watching.